Consciousness is the foundation of our reality. Everything we see, hear, think and feel is filtered through it. But the deeper question is, why does matter, which appears to be non-conscious, suddenly experience itself from the inside? This question lies at the heart of the hard problem of consciousness, a term coined by philosopher David Chalmers. Unlike the easy problems of cognitive science, such as explaining memory or perception, the hard problem asks why subjective experience arises at all. Neuroscientists have long assumed that consciousness emerges from complex neural activity, but recent research challenges this view. Studies in brain science, particularly those by Anil Seth and Giulio Tononi, suggest that our perception of reality is a controlled hallucination, a construct of the brain. Tononi's Integrated Information Theory, IIT, proposes that consciousness is not merely a byproduct of neurons firing, but a fundamental property of systems that integrate information. If this is true, then consciousness may not be limited to biological brains. It could be an inherent feature of the universe, much like gravity or electromagnetism. This idea aligns with panpsychism, a philosophical perspective suggesting that all matter, even at the smallest scales, contains some level of consciousness. If our intuitions about consciousness are wrong, then we may need to completely rethink our place in the cosmos. Defining consciousness is notoriously difficult. Philosopher Thomas Nagel, in his famous essay, What Is It Like to Be a Bat?, argued that consciousness is inherently subjective. No matter how much we study a bat's sonar-based perception, we can never truly know what it feels like to experience the world as a bat. This highlights the distinction between objective observations and subjective experience a challenge for neuroscience. Most scientific definitions of consciousness focus on awareness, but awareness itself exists on a spectrum. Infants, for example, are clearly conscious in the sense that they feel pain, pleasure, and sensations, yet they lack higher order thought. Even simpler organisms like jellyfish and bacteria respond to stimuli in ways that suggest some form of proto-consciousness. Neuroscientist Christoph Koch, a leading proponent of IIT, suggests that consciousness does not require a brain. It merely requires a system that integrates information in a meaningful way. This would imply that consciousness exists in degrees rather than an all-or-nothing phenomenon. If true, this would upend centuries of scientific thought that associate consciousness solely with human cognition. It also raises unsettling questions. If we can't define consciousness with precision, how can we be sure where it begins and ends? Could artificial intelligence or complex systems already be conscious in ways we don't yet understand? One of the most perplexing challenges in consciousness research is the difficulty of proving whether another entity is conscious. We assume that other humans are conscious based on their behavior, expressions, and responses. But what happens when those behaviors disappear? Consider locked-in syndrome, a condition where individuals lose all voluntary muscle movement while retaining full consciousness. A striking case is that of Jean-Dominique Bobby, former editor of Elle magazine, who suffered a stroke that left him completely paralyzed except for the ability to blink one eye. For months, doctors assumed he was in a vegetative state until they realized he was fully aware. Bobby wrote his memoir, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, by blinking in response to letters one at a time over the course of 200,000 blinks. This case reveals a deep flaw in our assumptions. If an intelligent, conscious human being can be mistaken for a non-conscious entity simply due to lack of movement, how can we be sure we aren't overlooking consciousness in other places? Some neuroscientists, such as Adrian Owen, 
have used fMRI scans to detect consciousness in unresponsive patients, showing that brain activity alone can indicate awareness. But this raises a profound question. Could there be other conscious systems in nature that lack our ability to communicate? Could plants, artificial intelligence, or even fundamental particles possess forms of consciousness that we are simply incapable of detecting? A core assumption of human experience is that consciousness controls our decisions and actions, but modern neuroscience suggests otherwise. Experiments by Benjamin Libet in the 1980s found that the brain initiates movement before we become consciously aware of deciding to move. In his studies, participants were asked to move their hand while noting the exact moment they decided to do so. Brain scans showed that neural activity in the motor cortex began nearly half a second before the participant was aware of making a decision. This suggests that our conscious mind is more of an interpreter than an initiator, explaining decisions after they've already been made. Neuroscientists like Daniel Wegener argue that the experience of free will may be an illusion. Our brains generate actions automatically and consciousness merely rationalizes them after the fact. This is further supported by research on binding processes, which shows that our brains synchronize different sensory inputs to create a seamless now, even though these inputs arrive at different times. When you press a piano key, you feel, see and hear the action as simultaneous, but in reality, the signals travel to the brain at different speeds. Your consciousness stitches them together into a unified experience. This means our perception of reality is actively constructed rather than passively received. If consciousness isn't the driver of behavior, but rather a byproduct of deeper neural processes, then its role in human cognition is far less central than we assumed. If our intuitions about consciousness are flawed, what comes next? There are two main possibilities. Either consciousness emerges from complex processing in some systems, or consciousness is a fundamental feature of reality itself. The first view aligns with the dominant neuroscience perspective, which sees consciousness as a byproduct of computation in the brain. The second view, supported by theories like integrated information theory and panpsychism, suggests that consciousness is woven into the fabric of the universe. If consciousness is fundamental, we might need a radically new way to study it. Some researchers propose experiments to test for shared consciousness between systems, much like entanglement in quantum mechanics. Others, like neuroscientist Stanislas de Hena, argue that AI could one day develop its own form of consciousness, challenging the biological monopoly on awareness. There are also profound ethical implications. If more systems are conscious than we assume, do we have moral obligations toward them? Could plants, AI, or even entire ecosystems possess some form of subjective experience? Some philosophers speculate about a future where consciousness can be shared or transmitted between beings, much like Einstein struggled to communicate his intuitions about relativity. If technology could one day allow us to directly experience another's perception, the subjective isolation of human consciousness might finally be broken. Science is only beginning to unravel these mysteries, but one thing is clear. Our current understanding of consciousness is far from complete, and the future may hold answers that completely upend what we think we know about reality.